Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin news. We're looking at banks are causing Indians to own Bitcoin. So in India, a lot of people are choosing to purchase Bitcoin because of the banks. And we're going to dig into this. We're finding that Bitcoin bulls are hodling. They're holding on for dear life. The Bitcoin bulls are not selling their Bitcoin. And it looks like the stars are beginning to line for Bitcoin. So the future could be very bright. Hang on. Let's get into it. Stay to the very end because we have some great news for you. So the question we want to look at is, should I buy Bitcoin now or wait and we're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. It really helps us out. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Now, uh, so, uh, Indians own Bitcoin and crypto because banks are incompetent, according to this survey. Paxful, a peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin trading platform with a presence in over 20 countries across the globe, has released the results of their survey on India. And so, and it was all about sentiment. The survey was all about sentiment. After polling Indians of between 18 and 55 years old, 75% of it, which 75% of the people polled own cryptocurrency, they held, they had cryptocurrency holdings, the platform sought to find the position of crypto as a driver of the Indian economy and which industry will drive crypto adoption the most. In addition, the survey wanted to know the opinion of crypto holders in the country and their sentiment towards digital currency. The results were astounding. Crypto as a vehicle of financial inclusion. 75.8% of those survey revealed that they used cryptocurrencies to easily and fairly transfer money. Another 64% believed um, that holding cryptocurrency was a path towards financial freedom. So it's interesting that more than 50%, 64.8% believe that they can get financial freedom through cryptocurrency. However, what was interesting is that 51% of those who took part in the survey strongly believed that cryptocurrencies are agents of financial inclusion. So in a world where not everyone can access services from traditional providers, the peer-to-peer -peer nature of leading cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, for example, enable not only a cheap and fair way of transferring values across geographies, but the lack of banks in the equation most of who are expensive makes it possible for those in the periphery to send and receive funds. So apparently it's very expensive uh, to work with a bank in India. And so I don't live there. I don't have experience with that. I thought that was an interesting point. And it actually kind of surprised me. I didn't expect that. The benefits of cryptocurrencies were also highlighted. Paxful notes that a bulk of survey responses believed HEA BTC in the benefits of crypto. Still, they believe that the aspect of regulation and specifically the impact of KYC and AML will play a big role in driving adoption. So they basically believe that the know your own customer laws and anti-money laundering laws and regulations would actually help drive adoption of cryptocurrency in India. And so it's interesting now that the Indian uh, Supreme Court has overruled the regulations that the banking industry imposed on cryptocurrency as an industry, uh, the, the entire nation is starting to wake up and generate more and more interest in cryptocurrency. And with over a billion people in India, this could have a significant impact on Bitcoin and the entire cryptocurrency market. Bitcoin bulls continue to hodl as optimism returns. Reports are still rolling in from the carnage of Black Thursday when markets around the world recorded record drops 
For Bitcoin bulls, though, new data indicates the crashing markets were just another opportunity to buy the dip. So the key takeaways, Bitcoin's long-term investors continue to hoard over 40% of the circulating supply despite last month's price crash. Hash rate for the network, and the hash rate is a way to measure how many miners are actually mining Bitcoin and providing the network security and network, um, oh, I can't think of the word I'm trying to think of, but basically they, they protect the network and they also prevent people from overspending, underspending. They make sure that the address wallets, the addresses and the wallets have the correct amount of cryptocurrency in them. And so they, they secure the entire network and it's done through a, a measure of how many miners are on the network is the hash rate. The hash rate shows how much computing power is being utilized for creating the new blocks that are getting added into Bitcoin. And so hash rate for the network is back on the rise after a sizable reduction in mining difficulty. Now the mining difficulty is a measure is directly related to the hash rate. When the hash rate drops, it becomes easier to mine Bitcoin. And when the hash rate goes up, it becomes more difficult to mine Bitcoin. And so all of that fluctuates based on the number of miners on the network. And the intent is, is they want to keep Bitcoin in a place where one new block is added approximately every 10 minutes. Now, strong fundamentals don't mean much when markets act on fear. So investors should remain cautious because fear can drive a price down even when there's no good reason or no fundamental reason for the price to go down. You know, it's kind of like um, with the whole uh, uh, stock market crash on what they're calling Black Thursday, <clears throat> there were a lot of companies that fundamentally uh, COVID-19 has no effect on that company whatsoever, and yet their stocks tanked. And the entire market crashing wasn't a reflection that that's suddenly now a bad company to invest in. The basics of that company, the, the uh, uh, success of that company didn't change dramatically. What changed dramatically was people's fear. And that fear caused them to sell and the selling caused the price to go down. So the selling wasn't a reaction because uh, suddenly it was a bad company. The selling was a reaction because of the emotion in the market and because people wanted to convert some of their assets into cash. Um, the economic principle of supply and demand determine Bitcoin's price. Those who hold on for dear life or hodl uh, take a portion of circulating supply off the market until they're willing to sell. In the span of two days, Bitcoin crashed from just below 7,000 to 3,900 this was a result of multiple factors, the primary of which being failed oil talks between Russia and OPEC. Data from CoinMetrics published in this week's Our Network newsletter suggests that Bitcoin bulls were undeterred by Bitcoin's crash last month. On the contrary, hodlers have come out of this crash with a larger portion of the supply, indicating their ever-optimistic mindsets. And so this... Uh, orange line here shows you addresses that have not withdrawn in over two years and you can see that overall as the crash occurred they were buying more bitcoin and they were adding to their wallet and these are wallets where they've held on to bitcoin for two years or longer and just have not spent any and so those wallets have increased those addresses have increased in the amount of supply Untouched Bitcoin supply refers to the amount of Bitcoin that has been idle for a certain period of time. Bitcoin's two-year untouched supply has been in a constant uptrend, signaling resistance from long-term hodlers. The crash was driven by over-leveraged speculators per a report from Chain Analysis. And if you want to see that report, um, I'm going to include a link to this article, and all you have to do is find this link right here and click on it and it'll give you more information about why it was that the crash was driven by over leveraged speculators. Coin market data further collabor corroborates this narrative as the 30 day untouched supply decreased dramatically between March 8th and March 20th. And so here's the drop from Black Thursday. 
and you can see when that drop happened, people were people with uh, uh, that have addresses that only have been around for 30 days were going up dramatically, and then all of a sudden Black Thursday happens, and boom, they dropped the number of addresses. You can see they were forced to sell their Bitcoin, and that's for that forcing it was mostly because they were over leveraged. All right. So anyway, interesting stuff, definitely worth knowing if you're part of the Bitcoin market. The last thing that we want to look at is the stars are aligning for Bitcoin and crypto. Investors must brace for the next 24 months, and they must brace in a good way. Despite the cryptocurrency crash that caused Bitcoin to plunge below 4,000 in March, Brendan Bloomer says he's optimistic that the crypto market will more than rebound. The founder of EOS and CEO of Block One says crypto's status as an ultra hard form of money that's resilient to inflation is getting a spotlight in the current economic environment. As governments increasingly print money to combat the virus crisis, the global macro environment has never before aligned the stars to highlight the value proposition of crypto uh, quite like what, it, what we're about to see in the next 24 months. Hold on to your seats. Bloomer says that he believes investors are scared of getting stuck holding too much cash and will have to think about where to put their money. So in the past, up until this month, that was an obvious thing to do. They had their financial advisors and they were going with what has been done over the last 10 years, 20 years, and even longer in some cases. And that was, you know, a combination of mutual funds, stocks, etc., um, but with this crash and what may happen in the near future, it is going to force people to consider alternatives as far as where they're investing money. And that, uh, the, you know, it, I agree with uh, Brendan Bloomer. Uh, in my opinion, it looks like that's going to be a good thing for Bitcoin overall. So that's our take on the news for the day. How can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Do you have any thoughts? Is there anything you'd like to share? Please leave it in the comments below. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And do me a favor. Have a fantastic day.